must be here. Take my advice and don't fool around. Let him have it. No, that's too dangerous. Do you think that teacher would really mail Papa a copy? She's mean enough to do anything. I had her once. Mm. Say, Willie, you'd better tell Pop before he finds out. No. Hello, Hello Pop. Pop. Oh, what, what do you know? know? Most happy to see sons number two and seven. Is nocturnal visit business or pleasure? Well... Oh, sure, we've been to a movie. And we just dropped by to take you home. Like cotton wool, filial devotion softens weight of parental crown. We'll enjoy escort after a brief glance at mail. Uh, say, Pop, you should have seen this movie. It was a mystery. A swell one. Of course, a great detective like you can solve it in no time. But it sure had us guessing. Yeah, and, and all through the picture, Willie was saying Pop would be too smart to fall for that gag. Thank you so much. Pop also too smart to fall for present gag. For 15 years, careful assistant has placed mail here. Why do you look at parents' letters? L letters? D did you say letters? There is one you fear, perhaps from school, containing unsatisfactory report card? Oh, gee, you win. What chance has a fellow got when his father's detective? Gee, Pop, how did you know? Have already received same by earlier mail. In Honolulu schools, E, not symbol for excellence, can forgive bad report card, but not attempted flattery or tampering with United States mails. Please assume proper position across parent's knee. Enter, please. I say, what's this? Inspector Duff. How are you, Charlie? Did I interrupt an old-fashioned spanking? Sometimes quickest way to brain of young sprout is by impression on other end. <laughs> Permit humble introduction of sons number two and seven. Hello, lads. Hello. How do you do? This gentleman, Inspector Duff of Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Gee. I say, Charlie, they're, they're a fine pair. Mighty fine. Carbon copies of my own two back home. Have you got Chinese sons? What? Oh, I mean, are you working on a case, Inspector? In Honolulu? Here, here, not so fast. Here you are, and I bet you want Pop to work with you, too. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes. Can put backward student to bed and do same to self. Oh, gee, Pop. Come on, Wally. Goodbye, Mr. Duff. Good night, lad. And, uh, let's keep this little meeting to ourselves, what? You bet. You can trust us. Boy, oh, boy. It's Scotland Yard arrive in time. Just arrived, Honolulu? No, got in yesterday on the Southland. And did not visit old friend? <laughs> I didn't dare. I'm traveling incognito. Just plain John Duff, British manufacturer. I had to avoid all connection with the police. Now I need your help. Most happy to lend humble assistance. What is nature of case, please? Murder. A strangler. Strangler. Yes, one so clever that I've traveled all over the world with him, or her, and learned practically nothing. Explain, please, ability to stay with Hunt without glimpse of Fox. The Fox is running with the hounds this time, Charlie. But if I'm right, he's one of these ten members of the Round the World crews, personally conducted by a Dr. Sudeman. You notice I include him among the suspects. Tour start from London? No, from New York, about four months ago aboard a British liner. The first night out, a New York judge was murdered in his stateroom. Judge was member of Cruz? No, he wasn't. But shortly before his death, he telephoned the purser and requested a list of Dr. Sudeman's party. When the steward entered the stateroom, he found his body. He had been strangled. A request for a passenger list was only clue? The only one. By the time the boat reached London, there was so little to go on, we couldn't detain anyone. So I joined the party as it left Liverpool on a small passenger freighter, the Southland. Have obtained further information on voyage? Nothing definite. And that's what worries me. 
The cruise ends in San Francisco next week. How can Humboldt's servant be of assistance? Well, Charlie, I've worked out a little plan that may drive our man into the open. Nature of plan, please. The whole party's at the Luani Hotel. What do you say we trot over there? I'll tell you on the way. Most happy. We'll inform Chief and leave immediately. Excuse, please. Certainly. Yes, Charlie, I see no reason why we shouldn't give the yard a hand. Excuse me. Yes? What? Murdered? At the Luani Hotel, huh? I see. We'll be right over. Please. Victim was strangled? Yeah, how did you know? Inspector Duff, now trailing strangler. Well, let's talk to him. Inspector. Jim, Harry. Strangler. Get the pull motor squad, quick. Cover the street in the alley and send a stop hard to the docks. Please, humbly request you assign me to case alone. Alone? Inspector, very old and honored friend. Vicious attack in my office, bitter challenge to friendship. Challenge will not go unanswered. Say, Pop, I'll drive Willie home and come right back. We'll drive Willie home. Good night. Please, something for a cup of coffee. Yeah, get along with you. I've just given you enough for ten cups of coffee. Mind your business. I've got a right to live. Yes, but not to cheat. Charity is one thing, but I hate to see a person victimized. Better ten times a victim than let one man go hungry. Thank you. Well, perhaps you're right, Mr. Chen. You know my name. We have met. No, but you were pointed out to me this afternoon as one of the celebrities of Honolulu. My name's Gordon, Professor Gordon, archaeology. You're here to pursue studies of ancient dead? No, I'm just winding up a world cruise with Dr. Suderman. I can't say that I'm sorry. Have found world uninteresting? Oh, not exactly. It's just that I'm worn out looking at the same faces. <laughs> but this publicity will ruin me. Can't you see this is my first cruise? You've got to keep it out of the papers. But, Dr. Suderman, a murder cannot be hidden, even as a convenience to your business. Oh, Lieutenant Chan, so they put you on the case. Doctor, this is the man who hear your troubles. Dr. Suderman conducts the tour. You won't detain my party, will you, Mr. Chan? I'm sure you'll find that this crime is the work of a sneak thief. If we don't sail tomorrow, it will upset all my arrangements. We'll do utmost to prevent murder from causing annoyance. What's that? Murder? Mr. Kenyon has been killed. Good heavens. Why, we had cocktails together before dinner. He and his nephew are on the cruise. First time you hear sad news? Yes. Please, then, how you know it was uncle, not nephew? Why... Well, I'm sure I don't know why I jumped to that conclusion. Surely, Mr. Chen, you don't think... Uh, merely interested in slip of tongue. Please, what number, Mr. Kenyon's room? 342. I'll have one of the bellboys take you up. Not necessary. Oh. Perhaps Dr. Suderman would be good enough. I'd be glad to, of course. And if you want me, uh, I should be in the bar. Uh, thank you so much. Right this way, Mr. Chan. I'm Wilkie, the house detective. Got everything lined up here. Hey, Joe, come here. This is the man that found the Kenyan bodies, the night watchman in this wing. There was cry for help? Oh, no, sir. It was like this. On my 11 o'clock rounds, I found this hall pitch dark. Someone had pulled the switch. Go on, Joe. Yes, sir. I was headed for the switch when I bumped into a man. Who are you, I asked, but he don't answer. I made a grab for him as he tried to get away from me. But before he did, I tore his coat pocket. I heard it rip. 
Well, when I got my flashlight out, I see Mr. Kenyon's door open and no light inside. So he went in for a look and he found the body. Honorable colleague has located owner of torn coat. Uh, no, not, not yet, no. But I, I'm working on it. Uh, Kenyon's room's right this way. This is Richard Kenyon, the nephew. Hello, Charlie. He's been dead about two hours. Body not moved. Only to take this one around his neck. What the strangler used. Ordinary strap from suitcase. Possibly one of twins. Have found, brother? Not on the Kenyon luggage. It must have come from outside. The death scene has upset worthy, doctor? What? Oh, yes, yes. If you'll excuse me, I, I think I'll go. Well, Charlie, if you don't need me anymore, I'll be on my way. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Regret necessity for asking questions. That's all right. Anything I can do to help. Were associated with uncle in business? No, I'm a lawyer. My uncle was a retired manufacturer. I simply took care of his legal affairs. Were in own room at time of crime? No, I was out with a young lady. Young lady also member of party? Yes. What's her name? We'll have to check all alibis. Alibi? Uh, word wrong, but procedure correct. Her name is Paula Drake. You'll find her in her room down the hall. Number 340. Thank you. Uh, what time you last see Uncle alive? Here in bed. Before I left. It was around 8.30. He was reading. Say, I didn't see that before. Times. 10, 20, 26, 30. A bag with 30 dimes. 30 pieces of silver. Hey, that sounds familiar. Symbol of ancient betrayal. That's it. The old Bible story of Judas. That's fantastic. My uncle never heard anybody in his life. He didn't have an enemy in the world. Well, it certainly wasn't a friend who came in here and killed him. Contradiction, please. Murder not take place in this room. Now, hold on, Mr. Chan. Is he dead in that bed or isn't he? Undoubtedly dead. But please, note most interesting lines on carpet, possibly made by heels of victim when dragged from next room. You mean the murderer brought him in here and tucked him in bed? Who occupies next room, please? A fellow named Pendleton. He's in the crew's party, too. Mr. Pendleton. Mr. Pendleton. Nobody here. Observe. Same telltale tracks on carpet, which lead to bed. But what would my uncle be doing in here? And if he was in that bed, why ain't it mussed up? It's just the way the chambermaid left it. Correction. Bed made up recently, but not by chambermaid. Huh? Observe, please. Bottom fold tucked in last. Chambermaid always tuck side fold in last to prevent sudden protrusion of feet into cold air. Yeah, that's right. Now I know why my feet get cold when the wife's away. Good evening. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing in my room? Police investigation. Police? Why, what's wrong? Your name is Pendleton? Yes. They know me here. I'm a member of Dr. Suleiman's party. But had planned to desert party tonight. I'm moving to the Imperial Hawaiian. They haven't a quiet room here. I'm a sick man. That dance music drives me crazy. I've got to have sleep. I'm not well. What time you leave room? Hours ago. Around eight. What's happened? What's the idea of all this questioning? A man's been murdered in your bed. 
In my bed? It was my uncle, Mr. Pendleton. He was strangled. Strangled? That settles it. I won't stay here another minute. Oh, no, you don't. You'll stay in here till... You can't keep me here. I know the law. I'm a sick man under doctor's care. Now, listen. Please. Meg, go, Mr. Pendleton, until tomorrow. Quick, have gentlemen follow. Right. May I ask favor, please? Why, certainly. Professor Gordon, at present in bar, would like to see him here. I'll get him right away. Thank you. Wish something, Dr. Suderman? Why, yes. I expected to find you in the other room, and I didn't want to disturb you. A brought twin of murder strap? Yes. I thought the other one looked familiar, so I went to my room... And found only one strap on suitcase. That's right. Someone's trying to incriminate me. Why was my strap used? Truth like oil will in time rise to surface. It's all set, Mr. It came from in here. Are you sure? It was Watson's room. Breaking the door. Here, wait. I I've got a pass key. What's Hurry. happened? Who fired that shot? Hurry. Susie. 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 Oh, what's wrong? Susie. What's happened to oh, her? I don't know. I was in the bath, and the time I could get here, I... You are a relative? No, no. I'm Miss Watson's secretary. Oh. Oh. They're thieves. You see, that's all she needed. Who do you think you are slapping me around? I was only doing what it says in the book. Well, what page was this on? Oh, now, you big bully you telling me that Susie. I don't see Susie! Well, if he had any sense, he'd be out on that balcony looking for that face instead of knocking me around. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, comb the ground. Search every suspicious character for a gun. Hurry there. Please, could lady give description of Peeping Thomas? Well, he looked like, ooh, ooh, his eyes, they, and he had on a, a really soft... But no, I couldn't swear to it. Are you sure it wasn't the chop suey we had for dinner? Since when does chop suey shoot bullets? <laughs> well, haven't you any idea what he looked like, Susie? Was he tall or short? Black or white? Thin or fat? Mr. Ross, don't you think you can leave the questioning to Mr. Chan? Chan? Did he say Mr. Chan? The famous detective? Oh, well, this really is a thrill. Oh, wait till I tell him back home about this. Oh, and what an ad for Honolulu. Scream once, and Charlie Chan's right on the job. <laughs> you know, if I'd known that you were in this hotel, I'd have walked right up to that guy with a face and... <sighs> oh, I got him. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! Look out, he's a killer. Oh. Is this the fellow, Susie? Not if he's using his own face. All right, now what were you doing please, out there? Please, please, release culprit and accept apologies for false alarm named Jimmy Chan. Gee, Pop, I was only bringing you the gun I found. Found gun at home, in bed? No, under that balcony. I came back just in case you needed any help. And when I found the gun and heard the voices, I climbed up to see what was... Where is weapon now? Gee, I, I guess I dropped it. Well, here it is. Hmm. 38. Ugly weapon. You had gun in handkerchief? Sure. They made me drop it. Please. Your handling of gun has smudged all possible fingerprints which might point to last user. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chan. I guess that puts me in the doghouse, right next to your son. You are also a member of Cruz? That's right. Name Frederick Ross, weight 168 pounds, height 5 foot 10, and a bit to 35. No particular interest in life, except Miss Watson. Attracted first by her money, and now by her wit and charm. <laughs> Freddy's only clowning, Mr. Chad. He's got so much money, he doesn't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Paula, what's happened? Please, you did not find Professor Gordon? No, he wasn't in the bar, and I... Hello. 
Mr. Chan? Yes, he's here. Yes? Uh, this is Wilson, detailed to follow Pendleton. I'm sorry, Lieutenant Chan, but he gave me the slip just after he left the hotel. When I couldn't pick up the trail, I came over to the Imperial Hawaiian, but he hasn't shown up here yet. Thank you so much. Oh, hello. Come on in. You might as well. Everybody else is here. Thank you. We wouldn't intrude, but we were told we would find a Mr. Chan here. This is Mr. Chan. Mr. and Mrs. Walters are members of my cruise. Duty brings us here, Mr. Chan. We have information concerning the murder of Mr. Kenyon. Kenyon murdered? Oh, Dick, your uncle. Murder? In this hotel? You withheld death news from rest of the party? I, uh, I thought it best. You know how people are about death. And I try to protect my clients from all unpleasantness. Who brought sad news, please? Those beyond. They know. They told me death would come among us. And the elevator boy said Mr. Kenyon had been murdered in his sleep. Paula, we are packing up and getting out of here. First a peeper, now a murderer. Susie, relax. Miss Watson, don't be alarmed, please. Don't you see you're upsetting everybody? What do you want to see Mr. Chan about anyway? To give him our evidence, no matter who is hurt. Tell him about it, Sarah. I am sorry to do this, but my friends in the beyond insist Interruption, that... please. Would prefer confining evidence to present world. Very well. Then I'll tell you what I heard with my own ears. Last night, Dick Kenyon had a violent quarrel with his uncle. Why, that's ridiculous. Please. It was over you, Miss Drake. Over Dick wanting to marry you. Mr. Kenyon said she was just off to the money Dick will inherit someday. Dick threatened his uncle for saying that. Mr. Chan, the woman's mad. You were present? Why, no, but, but the whole thing's fantastic. Of course it is. My uncle was reading a mystery story. It reminded him of Paula, and he kiddingly referred to her as an adventuress. Surely you must have realized we were joking. We did not. You are going to inherit your uncle's money, aren't you? Hey, are you trying to make everybody believe that Dick killed his uncle? We're only doing a most unpleasant duty. I suppose there have to be people like you in this world, Mrs. Walters. Why? Listen, Mrs. Walters. You better throw that crystal ball of yours away before somebody hits you with it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, I, I beg of you. I hate to disappoint you, Mrs. Walters, but everything I've said can be corroborated by Mr. Duff. He was in the room all the time. Gee, Pop, we forgot all about Inspector Duff. Inspector Duff? From Scotland Yard? Gosh, I didn't mean to. To speak without thinking is to shoot without aiming. Police headquarters, please. Mr. Chad. As head of this cruise, I insist upon knowing why Mr. Duff joined my party incognito. Inspector Duff on trail of ruthless murderer. In our party? Oh, we should never have taken this trip. Well, you certainly picked a good man for an alibi, Dick. Lieutenant Chan speaking. Would like to report on Inspector Duff, please. Oh. Thank you so much. Why, Pop, what's the matter? Old friend has joined honorable ancestors. You mean Mr. Duff is dead? You see, I was right. Death is still among us. Was it an accident? Inspector Duff meet death at hands of Strangler. Doctor would advise your party pack up at once and go aboard cruise ship. That suits me just dandy. Come on, Paul. Paula, I know there's something on your mind. You haven't said five words in the last half hour. What is it? Nothing. I've just been thinking. About us? Mostly about you and your uncle. Dickie wasn't joking when he called me an adventurous, was he? Are you still thinking about that? Of course he was. Then why didn't the Walters hear you laughing? Because the Walters hear only what they want to hear. You know that. But this time, I think they were telling the truth. I think you owe me the truth, Dick. You quarreled with him that night, over us. We didn't quarrel, Paula. But he objected to our marriage. He only asked me to wait. Is that all? Well, he said he didn't know anything about you. That you were going to inherit a fortune, and he expected great things from you. 
Then if that's what he said, why didn't you tell that to Mr. Chan? Why make up that story about a book he was reading? I don't know. Except that the Walters had put it so brutally, it... Well, I was afraid it might hurt you if I confirmed their story in front of everyone. Then how did you expect Mr. Duff to confirm your story? I didn't, really. I thought I'd get Mr. Chan alone later and explain. And did you? What good would it do now? He didn't question the story, and Mr. Duff is dead. So why stir up a mess of trouble for ourselves? Let's forget it, Paula. It's better that way. All right, Dick. I'm going below. Good night. Yes. This fog is beginning to get on my nerves. Yes, it does give you a feeling of being shut off from the rest of the world. <laughs> That's what I mean. I suppose it's man's inherent fear of the dark. Yes, I guess so. But have you ever felt that someone, a pair of eyes, was watching you? Oh, many a time. And in the loneliest places. Did I ever tell you of the time I opened the tomb? No, I mean since we left Honolulu. No. That's odd. What? A moment ago, I saw someone sitting in that chair. He's not there now. Well, maybe that's the fellow. All he had to do was to move from the chair to the rail. Hmm. Excuse me, sir. Were you just sitting... Mr. Chan. Good evening. Were you just sitting in that deck chair? No. You must have been seeing things, Doctor. But I tell you, there was someone in that chair. And I'm not so sure it wasn't you. You've been watching me ever since we came aboard. Correction, please. I'm watching everyone. And I wish you'd be a little more subtle about it. You've already made a nervous wreck of Mr. Pendleton. You won't see anyone, not even me, due to your blundering methods. Perhaps Mr. Pendleton's nervousness due to blundering murderer. Blunder is hardly the word for a man who so successfully, shall we say, eliminated your friend Inspector Duff. And if the gentleman is aboard, Mr. Chen, then you're risking your life too. Life has been risked for jewels far less valuable than friendship. Whoop! Sure rough out tonight. I'm sorry, Miss Watson. Were you listening at that door before you came out? Me? What, what for? If lady did not listen, perhaps saw someone else doing the same? Let me see. Yes! Yes, there was someone. I think it was a man. Yes? No, no, it could have been a woman. No, I'm sure it was a man because he had on. Oh, well, all I know is that when I looked, the ship lurched. And there I was. <laughs> I mean, you there you were. Oh, I'm chilly. How about a nightcap, Doctor? Good idea. Don't you leave me, Mr. Chan. Not with everything so spooky. I've had the creeps ever since I saw that face peering at me through the window. I can't eat, Mr. Chan. I can't sleep. It's awful. Shh! I thought I heard something. Echo of imagination, perhaps. No, Mr. Chan. There is something. Something that whispers and watches out there. In the fog. This is certainly a big help. Now I will see things. All night, Mr. Chan, I was dreaming about hands reaching at me. Have you ever been bothered by clutching hands, Mr. Chan? Only by family at home. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I sure got a bed tonight. Well, right now, I think I see a hand. Of course, I know that it's my imagination. Ah! It's alive! Ah! It's alive! Who's What's going on here? Uh, hey, bring it up! Bring it up! Come on, bring it up! How are you? Tell him to lay off. What's the idea of jumping Mr. Chan? I didn't jump him. I was just trying to attract his attention. He's my pop. He can explain everything. Oh, well, in that case, Mr. Chan. Correction, please. 
Unfortunate young men suffer from illusions. Then he isn't trying to pull a fast one, please, huh? Please, please, treat gently. May have grieving mother at home. We'll treat him gently, all right. We know how to handle stowaways. Come on! Oh, you Hey, where you been? I've been looking all over for you. Shh. Huh? Oh. Are you any good at moving furniture? Why? Susie's seen a ghost and wants to barricade herself in. <laughs> you better hurry up before she starts digging trenches. Thanks for the tip. Good night. Good night. Who is it? Stewart, sir. I have a radiogram for you. Put it under the door. Stewart! Stewart! Give me the wireless room. This is General Pendleton. Have you received a radiogram for me tonight? Nothing tonight, Mr. Pendleton. We did. Then tell him we don't want any. Who is it? The landlord. I've come for the rent. Come on, get up, girls. The sun's in the heavens, the decks are cleared for action, and all's right with the world. You must you bang on doors at the crack of dawn? The crack of dawn? Why, it broke wide open hours ago. Have a look. Stretch your legs, you'll feel better. I don't want to look. My legs are quite long enough. Will you stop making that infernal racket? You know, the trouble with you, my jolly friend, is that you've played with mummies so long you can't enjoy anything that's alive. Now, take Susie. I don't want Susie, and I don't want you and your early morning antics. I'm sick to death of the lot of you. I wish to heaven I were back in the tomb of the affair. So do I. What's going on out here? I think our mummy man would like us better if we were embalmed. Good morning. Ours are happiest when hands are busiest. Then I ought to be as happy as a lark. I've been shining shoes since 5 a.m. Oh, why did you do it, Pop? And just when I was on the trail of the Strangler. Man can more safely search for gold if world thinks he dig ditch. You mean by working on the boat, I can help you better? You catch. What do you want me to do? Could search closets of passengers for coat with torn pockets. Why, is he the murderer? These questions and answers come later. But Papa... Stewart's assistant speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pendleton. Yeah, I see, Mr. Pendleton. It's Mr. Pendleton. I'll bring your shoes right away. Yes, sir. I brought him the wrong pair. Ah, oh, these are his. I remember now. Please, please. Suggest you bring three pair shoes. Three pair? But have these... A strong desire to talk with nervous gentleman who refuses to open door. I got you, Pop. Who's there? Stewart's assistant, Mr. Pendleton. I brought you three pairs of shoes. One of them must be yours. Leave them outside the door. I can't do that, sir. I have to deliver the other two pair to somebody else. Wait a moment. Please excuse manner of intrusion. Violent, but most necessary. What right have you forcing your way in here? I'm not a criminal. Then please law a criminal weapon. It's not criminal to carry a gun after a man's been murdered in the very next room. Correction, please. Mr. Kenyon murdered in your rooms. That's not true. Evidence of truth conclusive. You used Dr. Suderman's strap to strangle victim. I didn't. I swear I didn't. I found him like that. He... Thank you so much. But I can explain, Mr. Chan. I'm under doctor's care. My nerves. I can't stand noise. Mr. Kenyon was hard of hearing. His room was quiet. I asked him to change with me. Later on, when I found I'd forgotten something, 
I returned to my own room and, and I found him dead. You then carried body to other room and placed it in bed? Yes. Mr. Kenyon meet death in your room. Would then appear murderer strangle wrong victim. Why should anyone want to kill me? Perhaps you can give answer. There's no one. No one, I tell you. Most happy to find man without enemies. I've seen before? Yes. There was a back like that in Kenyon's hand when I... when I found him. No meaning of symbol? It's a warning. A warning of death. My death. Man without enemies get warning of death? Explain, please. All I know is that five years ago my wife received a bag of coins like that one. She was terrified, but could give me no explanation. The very next day, someone tried to kill her. Identity of assailant known? Neither she nor I could think of a living soul who would wish to harm us. Yet after five years, revenge still sought. Most unusual. Unusual? It's madness. Only a maniac could repeat his attempts. Mr. Chen, you've got to protect me. It means my life. We'll do humble best. Think life most necessary to capture of Strangler. Thank you so much. <laughs> Looks like you're down again, Dr. Sutterman. Uh, I'm afraid Mr. Ross will say I played this very badly. <laughs> Where did he go? To get his own deck. He said you'd be certain of making one bed with marked cards. Oh. Poor Bam. Marjon. There you are. An 816 hand. It was too easy. I'm afraid you young moderns haven't the concentration for the older game. I guess you're right. Marjon with two players? Most unusual. Yes. An American innovation. Your beautiful game has suffered many changes since its introduction in the Han Dynasty. Always thought ancient pastime born earlier. Well, perhaps you're right. My only knowledge of Marjon is the result of my interest in the Han Dynasty. Are you familiar with Chinese archaeology, Mr. Chen? So sorry. Oh, too bad. That dynasty was the golden era in southern China. I've made quite a study of it. Would you like to play some mahjong, Mr. Chen? Please keep seat. In China, mahjong very simple. In America, very complex. Like modern life. Yes, I quite understand that a man in your profession would prefer the simpler form of all games. Well, I'm afraid our legal friend here wouldn't. No, I've always felt that Chinese law was a bit too simple and direct. Quite true. When Chinese emperor have eight suspects of murder, he solved problem very quickly. Really? How? Chop off eight heads, always sure getting one criminal. <laughs> that would simplify your problem considerably, wouldn't it, Mr. Chan? Indeed, yes. Not always easy to reduce many suspects to one. No, and there's not much time left for that, is there? Why not, please? Well, if I know my law, Unless you have some evidence by the time we reach San Francisco, there's nothing to prevent us from scattering to the four corners of the earth. Young man's knowledge of law quite accurate. Would be most useful to number one suspect. Please excuse. This is neither the time nor the place, Jeremiah. My mind is made up. Please, wait. A force from within tells me what is best. You seen that Chinese boy? No. Darn kid. Never around when you want him. How's Mr. Fandrum doing? Okay, I guess. He ain't set foot outside of his room in the past four days. The only time I see him is when you bring his meals. Crazy coot. Yeah. He sure must be scared of something.
Hey, what are you? Shh. Button says this isn't it. What? Where'd you get that? The Chinese boy gave it to me and said, you said this isn't it. Isn't what? He said that you would say, how do I know? Well, I don't know either. Here, I'm going after that kid. Isn't that my coat? Well, I don't know, is it? Yes, it is. Where'd you get it? Well, the Chinese boy gave it to me and he... Thanks. What are you doing? I, I brought your shoes back, sir. I put them in... Wait a moment. Haven't I seen you before? Maybe. Lots of people have. Oh, yes, I remember. You're Mr. Chan's son. What are you hiding? Nothing. Just my shoe rag, sir. Let me see that. Let me see it. something, please? Where is your son? Elusive offspring, like privacy, sometimes hard to find. Will you be so kind as to tell me why your son was rifling my cabin? Perhaps eager twig only bending to duty. Duty fiddlesticks. I caught the little beggar red-handed. Where is caught beggar? Here I am, Pop. Give me that. And here's the coat with the torn pocket. Excuse. Would explain unfortunate tear well, well, as you know, passengers on a long cruise are likely to grow lax in their moral conduct. Not with you around. And on the night that Mr. Kenyon was murdered, I was about to enter my hotel room when I saw a man come down the unlit hall and enter a lady's room. And he calls me a snooper. Quiet. Continue, please. I turned quickly to follow him, and when I did, my pocket got caught on the doorknob. And then? And when I turned around, he was gone. Into whose room, please? I'd rather not answer that. A woman's reputation is involved. Excuse. Chivalry, quite understandable. Thank you so much. Say, if he knew about that torn pocket, why didn't he tell you before? Suppose you furnish answer. Well, it's obvious. The man whose pocket was torn murdered Mr. Kenyon. Thread of evidence weaker than thread of pocket. But, Pop, two guys couldn't have torn their pockets the same night. Is possible. But darned improbable. I'm going to keep my eye on that old blue nose. Oh, good morning, Mr. Chan. Good morning. Uh, must we still have a guard at Mr. Pendleton's door? Guard inconvenience you? Well, <laughs> yes. Since this is their last night aboard, I'm giving a little party. I should like the passengers to remember this trip as a pleasure cruise, Mr. Chan, but with guards in front of their doors. Mr. Pendleton, still very nervous man. Oh, well, in that case, I suppose he won't want to join the party. But you'll come, won't you? Most happy to celebrate, even without reason. <laughs> splendid, splendid. I wonder if you judge the hoppy horse races. Uh, so sorry. But only knowledge of horse race is empty pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need know for these horses. <laughs> In any case, it will give us a chance to forget our troubles, especially with you as the judge. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. <laughs> Miniature Sherlock now suspect worthy doctor? I don't know who to suspect, but I don't like this judge business. Judge always honorable position. But you know, the Suderman was awfully anxious to get the guard off Pendleton's door. Guard will remain. But I tell you, Pop... Correction, please. Pop, tell you. Offspring return to footwork. Parent take care of headwork. Look at me, just 
Bakın böyle kes. Come on, turning iron. <gülüyor> That's a hard one. Slippery Sam. <laughs> Jockey, Mr. Frederick Ross, owner, Miss Susie Watson. Time, one minute and ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> quiet, please, quiet. Congratulations quiet. to intrepid horsemen. <laughs> <laughs> and symbol of supremacy to charming owner of noble steed. <laughs> Thanks. I think I'll get some oats for the noble steed. And some rye for myself. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please. There will be races every 50 minutes on the quarter hour, dancing in between. The next race will be at 8.15 exactly. On with the music. Would you like to dance, Susie? Who, me? What's the matter, Paula Bregolay? Oh, no, she's not interested in dancing with me. How about you? Oh, I love it. Mr. Child, you better take shelter before I start swinging. She's a swell dancer. And the voids bring sadness? No, I'll be glad when tomorrow comes and we've landed. Young man, not so glad, perhaps. He should be relieved. It hasn't been a very happy voyage for him. Death of uncle, most unfortunate. Yet leave nephew, very rich man. That could never make up for... Or quarrel with uncle before death? They didn't quarrel. Yet lady with spirit friends here same. But Dick explained that. Mrs. Walters misunderstood. Young man's explanation, like skin of sensitive woman, very thin. They did quarrel. He told me so himself. Mr. Chan, you don't think that... Please. One cloud does not make storm, nor one falsehood criminal. Still trust, young man? I want to very much. Then do, but trust must be shared. Let young man know what is in your heart. Then you believe he's innocent? Unfortunate profession. Make detectives suspect innocent with guilty. Not so with lovers. Thank you, Mr. Chan. to be judged? Well, we hope so. But the Walters are throwing a damper on the party. Come quick. Mr. Pendleton's dead. Dead? Yeah. Strangled with a leather shoelace. I was just going by the door when I... You keep the others here while Mr. Chan and I go Please, down. Please, prepare to go alone. Mr. Chan, I'm responsible for these people. As if you fail to protect Mr. Pendleton, I must insist... Only admit failure, but suggest your presence more useful to remainder of party. Dead men need no protection. Come, please. I knew something was wrong when I saw the guard wasn't on the door. Who deliver food? Buttons. Shall I get them for you? Yes. Oh, Buttons! Oh, Buttons! Hey, where have you been? Say, somebody socked me. I heard a noise. Come on, Pop wants to see you. Yeah. Hey. 
Here's the guard, Pop. I found him in a cabin down the hall. He was out cold. I'm sorry, Mr. Chan. I heard a noise down the corridor. I stepped in the cabin. I guess, well, somebody crowned me. Gee, gee, is he dead? Quite dead. When you last see him alive? When Buttons brought his dinner. Usual time, around 8.30. And how long ago you were attacked? Gosh, I don't know. Head need attention? No, sir, I'm all right. I'm just a little groggy. You want me back on the door, sir? If feeling fit. Would prefer working without interruption. Perhaps later can give more information. Yes, sir. Radio room, please. Gee, Pop, did he send a radiogram before he was murdered? Would appear so. A Lieutenant Chan speaking. Please inform if Mr. Pendleton sent radiogram within hour. Yes. He telephone message? Please repeat contents. Sorry, Mr. Chan. I can't give out any information concerning personal messages without the captain's permission. Understand. Please obtain permission and send message to Mr. Pendleton's stateroom soon as possible. Thank you. Gee, Pop, how did you know we sent the message? Linda Pendleton, Broadmoor Apartment, Salt Lake City, Utah. We are in danger. Do not come to San Francisco. Love, Gerald. Boy, danger was right. Say, Pop. Say what? If he telephoned the message, where's the original? This is only the impression. Message not in logical place. Perhaps in hands of Strangler. But what would he want with it? Especially if Pendleton had already sent the message. If answer known, criminal's motive clear. Can recall shoes tied with leather laces? Yeah, there was a pair of shoes with leather laces. Honor, please. Why, it was a... It was a... Yes, yes. Gee, Papa, I can't remember. Better a father lose his son than a detective his memory. Oh, who had leather laces? Leather laces, leather laces. From the radio operator, Mr. Chan. Thank you. Radiogram telephone to operator four minutes after nine. And it's now 9.30. Listen. Linda Pendleton, Broadmoor Apartment, Salt Lake City, Utah. All is well. All is well, Meet but... me at Delphi Hotel, San Francisco. Love, Gerald. But the message on the pad says, danger, don't come to San Francisco. That message never sent. Second wire evidently sent by murderer after Mr. Pendleton dead. Then he must be out to get Mrs. Pendleton, too. And that's why he sent this wire, for her to come to San Francisco. Is possible. Murderer sent wire four minutes after nine. Undoubtedly killed victim shortly before. Would not risk absence from party too long. That's right, Pop. Please get pictures fifth race. Pictures? But why, Pop? Buttons take pictures of all races. First race, eight o'clock. Then every 15 minutes. Therefore, fifth race, nine o'clock. Is true? Yeah, and the pictures would tell us who wasn't at the party at nine o'clock, and that's our man. Please bring film and stewards developing material to lowly father's stateroom at once. You said it, Pop. With Button's pictures and my missing laces, your case is as good as solved. <laughs> Lieutenant Chan speaking. I tried to see you, Mr. Chan, but the guard wouldn't let me in. It's most important. Uh... Uh, about the leather shoelace. Uh, thanks, I will. Uh, in your cabin? Right away. So when I heard the boy say that Mr. Pendleton had been strangled with a leather lace, uh, I remembered that mine were missing from my shoes when the boy returned them this morning. Think boy removed laces? Oh, I don't know. But I do know that I didn't strangle Mr. Pendleton. Though it's evident someone's anxious to have you think I did. I appreciate honest explanation. Not at all. Thank you so much. I'm glad to help. Now I remember. Remember? The guy with the missing shoelaces. Was Mr. Gordon. Yeah. How did you find out? Simple deduction. Yeah? Yes. He told me so. Oh, he did, huh? Well, you know why? 
because he knew darn well that I'd tell you. Covering up, that's what he's doing. You know, Pop, I think that... Please, suggest you rest overwork brain and exercise watchful eye while parent develops interesting negatives. Hello? Is Mr. Chan there? Yes, but he's busy right now. Can I take the message? I'm his son. Tell him that if he's interested in finding the missing shoelace, he might look on the top drawer of the dresser in cabin 26. Who is this? Hello? Hello? Yes, quite. Have you seen Chinese boy? Yes, he was chasing someone down the hall. Please, come quick. Stop him! Stop! Did you see him? Yes, he went We've got to get him. That guy's a killer. Killer? back to lounge, quickly. Yes, sir. Nice work, Mr. Chan. Correction, please. Did not fire gun? No. no. Then it must have been me. But I never got closer to him than 30 feet. Gee, you came close enough to save the rest of us. Why, that's the bigger we saw in all the Lula, Mr. Chan. Beggar? But how did he get on the boat? Did not come aboard as beggar. Ross! Gee, I never figured it was him. But why should he pretend to be a beggar? And why did he kill my uncle? Fear mask covers more than countenance. Here are the negatives, Pop. Ruined by life. Mr. Chan, don't you think it would be better if we were to return to the lounge and quiet the other passengers? Uh, yes, thank you. Yes. Come, gentlemen, please. You will inform Captain, please? Yes, sir. Boy, imagine old Hawkeye hitting him from 30 paces. In darkness, sometimes difficult to distinguish hawk from vulture. I don't follow you, Pop. Bullet shot from 30 feet does not leave powder burns. Powder burns? Say, then Ross must have shot himself. Quite sure dead man fire at officer? I'll say I am. If I hadn't yelled, he would have got him. If only one bullet fire from gun. One bullet? Then someone must have got in close enough to... But that doesn't make sense. We were all after him, and whoever killed him would have bragged about it. All but one who wished to remain anonymous.
Well, here we are, Pop, without a clue. I couldn't find the other shoelace, and you let him get the negative. Guess we can't solve them all. Memory of number two son still elusive, like soap in bathtub. Memory? Elusive? You mean Mrs. Pendleton? Gee, Pop, that's right. If she recognizes anybody in the party, why? I've talked with the others, Mr. Chan. They've all agreed to attend the inquest. I explained it was merely a matter of routine. I've arranged to hold same immediately. Well, looks as though we're in. I'm uh, sorry the trip wasn't more successful for both of us, Mr. Chan. Thank you. Regret is mutual. <laughs> Hello, Lieutenant Chan. We got your cable and the inquest is all set. Are those the two? Mr. Pendleton. Mr. Gerald Pendleton. Mr. Pendleton. It's like a cry from the world beyond. Great heavens, I wish they'd get this over with. You're going to hang your hat on my goose Gerald pimples. Pendleton. Telegram from Mr. Pendleton. Here, boy. I'll take that. Are you Gerald Pendleton? There's Mr. Pendleton. Excuse, please. What is it, Pop? Message from Oakland Airport. Mrs. Pendleton, flying to rejoin husband, has met with serious airplane accident. Oh, oh gosh. Please escort others to inquest. Where are you going, Pop? Can I go? Think presents more valuable with party. All right, is this all of them? Hey. Well, that's all of them, Captain. Come on, folks. We're off to the morgue. Since the testimony of these witnesses is in complete agreement, Lieutenant Wilson, my findings for the coroner's jury will be murder and justifiable homicide. I see no reason to hold these people any longer tonight. That's all. Well, that's that. Yeah, that's over. Hello, Tom. I have that coffee now. Wait a minute, folks. Mr. Coroner, aren't you even going to wait for Pop? Hmm? Who's Pop? His father is Charlie Chancellor. Oh, I see. Well, if your father has important information, where is he, young man? Where is he? Well, uh, I don't know, uh, but... Present, please. Forgive unavoidable delay, but with kind permission of most worthy coroner, would like to present additional information. Very well, but the case is obvious enough. I'm satisfied that Ross murdered Pendleton and was shot attempting to escape. You don't want us to wait, do you, Mr. Chan? We're all anxious to get home. I don't think we should leave until we hear what Mr. Chan has to say. Why don't you move in? You'd love it here. Understand urgent desire to return to loved ones, but will detain only momentarily. It's all right with me, as long as I can catch the midnight plane. Thank you so much. We'd like to present new witness. Just a minute. Tom, hold that coffee. All right. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Now, doctor, please. Widow of unfortunate member of crews, Mrs. Pendleton, who, despite painful accident, is most anxious to testify. All right, Mrs. Pendleton, you may proceed. I'm an actress by profession. I was first married in New York to a man whom I believed to be a jeweler. Later, I was shocked to discover that he was really a, a thief. When he tried to make me use my profession as an actress to help him smuggle jewelry, I went to the police. He was sent to prison. He swore he'd make me suffer for that. Who was this man? His name is Eberhardt. Jim Eberhardt. I divorced him and resumed my maiden name. But I lived in terror of the day he would be let out. He was the sort of man who would never stop until he had revenge. Then I met Mr. Pendleton. Shortly after our marriage, Jim escaped from prison. That very day, I received a small bag of coins containing 30 dimes. I knew what that meant. The next night, when I was alone, he broke into my apartment and tried to kill me. Go on, please. Shortly after, he was recaptured. Last May, he was released. Last May? Well, that's when we started on our cruise. Then Everhart must have been on the boat. Not likely. Pendleton certainly would have recognized him. 
No. No, Mr. Pendleton had never seen Eberhardt. I hadn't even told him about Jim. Then there's only one answer. Eberhardt must have used the name of Ross. We'll settle that in a moment. If you'll wheel Mrs. Pendleton over to the viewing window, she can identify him. Identification unnecessary. Ross, not Eberhardt. Not Eberhardt? New York police report Ross as wholesale jeweler, suspected of being fenced for stolen gems, but never arrested. If that's the case, why did he kill Pendleton? Correction, please. Pendleton killed by Eberhardt. Then why was Ross wearing that disguise? Forced to do so. Eberhardt, jewel smuggler, had sufficient evidence to convict Ross as fence and thus compelled him to join ingenious murder plan. When Ross trapped in hold, Eberhard, fearing exposure, eliminated only other person with knowledge of Mad's scheme. It's a strange case you built up, but how are you going to prove it? You haven't got Eberhard. Contradiction, please. Jim Eberhard, maniac killer, now in this room. Oh, what in this room? Well, if he's here, we'll soon find out. Mrs. Pendleton, would you please remove your bandage for a moment and identify this, uh, this, uh, Jim Eberhardt? I'm afraid that will be impossible. Mrs. Pendleton has been temporarily blinded. Perhaps Lady can identify first husband by his voice. I'm sure I can. But that's useless. It wouldn't stand in a court of law. You have no oh, right to do that. Quiet, please. Will you end this as soon as possible? My patient is very weak. So sorry. You will each step forward and repeat words. I am Jim Eberhardt. This is ridiculous. I'm not Jim Eberhardt. Jim. I tell you, I'm not Jim Eberhardt. You hear me? I'm not. Can stop talking now, Dr. Suderman. Arrest gentlemen who protest too much. Oh! Oh, stop it! the morgue. It's a madhouse. Oh. Clear out, everybody. Please, stay here. But, Pop, uh, Mr. Cham, will you wait and help me make some sense out of my notes? Most happy. I always knew, deep within me, that he was the one. Anyway, congratulations. Thank you. Well, good night. Good night, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Chan. Trust unhappy ending to cruise has not discouraged young people from greater voids? Oh, no, not at all. We're being married tonight. Congratulations. Thanks. You can reach us at the Adelphi, but don't call unless... I understand. After wedding bells prefer no phone bells. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come along, Susie. We'll need you as a witness. Uh, you can always find me, Mr. Chan, at the YWCA, day or night. Do we have to wait here, Pop? Couldn't we go to a hotel until the cops pick up Suderman? I'm hungry. Me too. I always have a snack after a hard day. Come on, help yourself, son. What? Here? With all those... Oh, why not? This is the quietest place in town. Usually. Oh, get those exhibits off the table in the viewing room, will you, son? Yes, sir. Say, Doc, you didn't see Ross's mask and hat, did you? They're not here. That's strange. They're on the table at the inquest. They're not here now. Gosh! Pop! They're gone! The mask and the hat! Gone! This is the darkest case I've ever been on. Mask and hat on table before light extinguished. Did you see anybody pick up the mask in there, Doctor? In the darkness? How? Well, I know none of the stiffs in there took it. It's locked. Bring it in quickly. <laughs> Blind, crippled, you double-crosser. I've waited five years for this. 
I swore I'd get you and Pendleton. Well, I got him, and if it's the last thing I do, I'll... Say, what's going on here? Merely capture of murderer. It was Mr. Chan's idea, and he called the turn. We even heard him say he killed Pendleton. May remove mask now, Mr. Everhart. You were extremely clever, using disguise as beggar to dispose of victims, then forcing Ross to wear same disguise and be seen with you in front of Honolulu Hotel. Last night, fearing exposure by development of pictures, you compelled Ross to steal negatives after drawing my son away by telephone call. And when Ross, wearing disguise, was trapped in hold of ship you saw opportunity to establish perfect alibi by killing him. But powder mark on mass was fatal blow to ingenious plan. I underestimated you, Mr. Chen. You said on the boat that the murderer was a blundering fool. You were right. I should have eliminated you as I did your friend Inspector Duff. I'm most happy for truth of ancient saying. Opportunity will never knock again. Take him away. You are all right? Why, yes, I... Don't move or I'll shoot. I've told you I'm not Everhart, you young fool. Why? I... Keep your hands up. Mr. Chad, will you please tell this crazy son of yours that please. I... Please, release good doctor. Huh? But I found him hiding in the closet. He's Everhart. Correction, please. Dr. Suderman only follow careful instructions to mislead real criminal. Real criminal? Who? Mr. Gordon, supposed archaeologist. Supposed archaeologist? When did you find out he wasn't? On boat at Mahjong table, when he referred to Han Dynasty as golden era of South China. Well, sure, wasn't it? When will number two son ever learn history of ancient ancestors? Golden era Shang Dynasty, North China. Oh. And look at her. She's not blind. Mrs. Pendleton, extremely brave woman, play most dangerous role to help apprehend murderer. Regret unpleasant experience, but can now live in peace. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Goodbye, Mr. Chen. Goodbye. Mr. Chen, I'm happy to have been of assistance. Thank you, Doctor. But, Pop, if you suspected Gordon and Mrs. Pendleton knew him, why didn't you just have her identify him as Everhard instead of using a trick? And turning my morgue into a roughhouse. Mere identification of suspect, no proof of crime. Singleness of purpose and cleverness with which murders committed indicate that desire for revenge drove Eberhardt insane. Therefore, prepared trap to anticipate inevitable attempt upon former wife. Thus, Eberhard convicts self. Gee, Pop, you sure figured that one out. And now how about a nice, quiet cup of coffee? Thank you so much. For once, agree with number two son. Much prefer noise of restaurant. <laughs> you said it.